I had a chance to play No Rest for the Wicked early, as a matter of fact, and they just launched a new trailer like seven hours ago. So we're gonna take a look at the trailer and then we're gonna kind of talk a little bit about the trailer. And I'm also at the end of this video here going to describe to you what the game is sort of being pitched as and what people might think it is. But I'm gonna let you know from my played up to the first boss, I'm gonna kind of tell you what I actually think it is and how some people might think it's something else and you know your expectations might be a little bit different than the reality of what this game actually is. So we'll talk about that. On top of it, I will be live now. You can click on the link down below in case you wish to join by the live stream. I'll also be live streaming this on the 18th when it comes out as well. So let's go ahead and watch this trailer here and let's talk a little bit about the game. So, it's true. The king is dead. We find ourselves in a place we never sought. The threat of anarchy swells beneath us. One of the things you're gonna notice right off the bat, like right in this scene right here, is the visuals of this. Like this, it's much like Becky. a platformer game. I mean, it feels a lot like a platformer game, which makes sense because the creators of this game were actually the people that made Ori and the Blind Forest, which was a very well reviewed, very good uh, platformer style game. But visually, the game is, is really well done, as well as the style of the game definitely reminds me of a platformer. Scraps, we take what we need. A plague that spent a thousand years confined to stories is now clawing at our gate. Pestilence, it festers everything it touches. Okay, so this right here, this is the first boss. I got a little bit of a chance to play against this guy and fight this guy. Uh, the bosses are definitely more difficult than the standard ARPGs. This is pitched sort of as an ARPG style of game, but it's much more than just a meat bag and then you have to have the right stats to beat. Like there's definitely mechanics around it and you're going to want to avoid abilities and all that. So the, the boss fights felt more Souls-like to me than ARPG. It's a punishment upon those who have lost their faith. God's chosen descent high. Yeah, that was a good example of something that I commented on in my previous video talking about this game in which that I think one of the things this game does the best is the verticality, if that's a word, of the levels. Like it, it does feel like a platformer, but instead of just having like a big flat horizontal map, each of the areas seem to have multiple layers and levels to it. Then you go back and then unlock something and then you'll go back almost like Metroidvania style a little bit. So I actually enjoyed that quite a bit in my experience playing through the first act. History will remember how we answer. No matter the cost. And then of course we're gonna see the game is coming out here on April 18th. That will be the early access for it on Steam. It is an early access game. Now, a couple of things about this game is one, it is being very much pitched as an ARPG. In fact, in the description of this video, it says a visceral precision ARPG. And I'm gonna really hone down on the precision part of this game. It is feels much more Souls-like to me and platformer style gameplay than it really did. And when I say platformer, I'm not necessarily, you know, referencing like Mario or something as much as, as more of like the Ori and the Blind Forest. Like it had this, progression of sort of back and forth and up and down that kind of reminds me of a platformer, but the combat itself felt Souls-like, whereas the inventory system, the stat system, all of that felt much more ARPG. Now, the reason that I say it feels more Souls-like than ARPG is because when you say ARPG, a lot of people, especially people that watch this channel, might be thinking of games like Diablo, Path of Exile, Last Epoch, and it really only had maybe like the inventory system and like some of the uh, you know weapons and items, a similarity to it. It felt much more like Elden Ring than it did, you know, like a Path of Exile mapping type of game. 
If I show you an example here of boss fights, you'll probably see what I mean, which is the style of boss fight. Like I have to make him stagger in order to be able to get some free shots off on him. We have a stamina bar type of system where if I don't have the stamina, I can't dash or I can't use, you know, my uh, attacks, etc. So it's, it is going to be a lot more of that style than it is just mindlessly spamming abilities. The inventory system here, you got a character, you're going to put gear on the character, you'll be able to acquire weapons, etc. The cool thing about the weapons is as you get the weapons, they're not exactly like hand placed in the map. So if you replay the game or reset with a new world or something, there's some RNG based upon what kind of weapons you're going to get with what kind of stats. There's actually a gear system of like normal rarity, rare rarity, epic, you know, there's that type of system that you're going to be familiar with in these types of games as well. And really the visuals of the game are, are pretty flawless. And this is a pretty good example of sort of that verticality. I was talking about how the map feels like it's, you know, as much horizontal as a vertical progression as well. And the individual combat feels impactful. Like each one of these minions are actually kind of scary, especially in the start of the game. And depending upon what weapon you are using, if you're using a fire staff or something, you'll be using much more of the magic abilities, obviously, as opposed to like daggers. It's going to kind of change the style and the range of the gameplay. I know it's through my different playthroughs. I found myself having a pretty vastly different experience depending upon which weapons I was using. The stamina bar system, you're either going to love or hate depending upon how you feel about stamina based systems. Even the map itself is visually pretty good. So I, I was pretty impressed with this game. I think if you go into it just looking to have a fun time and enjoying a game, as opposed to like, I'm looking for the next Diablo, then you're probably going to enjoy the game a lot. If you don't like stamina systems, you don't like Elden Ring, you don't like any platformers, it might not be the game for you. But if you like any of those things mentioned, I think you're really gonna like this game. And it's surprisingly, it's again, I'm gonna mention the visuals because it's surprisingly like the environment feels very compacted is how I describe it, where it's, it's, there's a lot of little things to find in a somewhat small area. And the amount of minions is, you know, the mob density to use a line from ARPGs here, it's very thin. There's not a lot of them. It's, it's impactful as you go through would be the word. So it's not necessarily like you're going to be blasting through thousands of minions. You're, you're going to be having small, concise fights, depending upon which weapon you're using at various ranges. And that's pretty much the gameplay style, at least in the first act that I played. But I only have early impressions because they didn't let us play through the entirety of the game, just up to that first boss there. So I'm kind of excited to see from the trailer that we saw here, the extra bosses that are in it. It looks like there's some pretty difficult ones and boss fights are normally my favorite things in these style of games. And the boss that I experienced seems pretty enjoyable as well. So hopefully the rest of the bosses will you know, keep up to snuff with uh, with how I was feeling about the game and my play in, during my time playing it. But that's about it. I'll see you on the live streams. I'm live now. You can click the link down below to join the live stream if you want to. Let me know what you think about the game, about the trailer. I'm pretty excited by it. It's been a while since I've played a, a good new platformer or a Souls-like game, and that's what it feels like most to me. All right, love you all. See you on the next one.